All right, so in today's video, we're going to be looking at the latest embodiment of my uh, newest vice, and that is obviously putting Bluetooth in old car stereos. So this here is a Audio 10 CC. Um, it's the BE uh, 3200 model, so the one that has the second uh, joystick on the right side. Uh, the 3100, I think, doesn't have the, the second one. It has just an RDS button, which makes absolutely no sense, but anyway. So uh, let's first uh, get a quick demo going. All right, so we have uh, we have the radio going, and let's bring in the iPad. And as we can see, um, there's absolutely nothing found, right? So the Bluetooth module in this build is actually inactive, unless you go to the cassette. So you go to the cassette, and uh, it should become available. Hopefully, there we go. Connected, and uh, now we should be able to play some music. Oh, the volume is very low. Got a little test speaker over there in the back. But yeah, that's pretty much um, the whole demo done. At the moment we go, uh, let's go back so we're connected. So the moment we go to the radio, the Bluetooth module switches off and the music stops playing automatically on whatever you have playing. And this is pretty good if you right, not have the Bluetooth module active because otherwise uh, it'll fuck up your sound when people call you and, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's best just to have it on when you want it to be playing and uh, obviously if you're, if you're playing on the... you could just hit play on the phone. Right, and then hit the cassette and it should steal the audio. Hopefully. All right. So it does actually work quite quite nicely. I'm, I'm quite quite proud of this. And the reason why you would have it go through the cassette and not just directly on the on the outputs on the inputs of the power amplifier is to have access to first of all the volume here, right? Because you want to turn a track up. It's really cumbersome to have to go to the phone. I've actually tried, tested that, and it's really not, not doable. It's, it's not a nice solution. Um, so first of all, going via the cassette mechanism, you have obviously the volume, right? And uh, you also have, more importantly, oh, crap. more importantly, you have uh, the equalizer. Uh, so treble and bass you can set a very nice equalizer. So this sounds very very nice all the all the Mercedes radios seem to um, You have the equalizer and also you have the fader and balance for some reason This doesn't have a fader So I have no fucking idea why I mean I I suspect that the card this came out of had an actual analog thing in the dash so they programmed it out of this I have no idea why you do that, but anyway, it's the way it's done. So let's uh, tear this down and... Um... Okay, so now that all of the power supply shit is out of the way, we can uh, get to this. This actually doesn't have any screws for the... Uh, <clears throat> for the uh, top cover, but it does use Torx screws inside, which is... They're great screws, but you do need the separate screwdriver, so keep that in mind. have no idea. I think it's T7, is it? Yeah, T7. So before I remove the uh, cassette assembly, uh, basically this is what we have going on. I've uh, screwed... I've drilled two holes into this uh, metal. It was a pain in the ass, so... Uh, that took quite a while. And then I basically glued the entire Bluetooth slash uh, step-down converter slash capacitor over here. Uh, it takes the power from the uh, motor that spins the tape. This will always spin in the same direction no matter how the tape spins, so that's fine. Um, 
Exactly, and the audio just goes off to uh, to these very nice test points on the board where you could just inject the the audio. There we go. Probably knocked off half the components off the board, but cost of doing business. All right, so exactly, this is the uh, tape deck, and not a lot going on apparently at first sight. Um, initially, I wanted this to be completely out and just have the Bluetooth be turned on when you go to cassette because this motor, although moderately silent, it, all the gears and shit inside still make quite a bit of a noise. So, right, if, if you don't have music playing, you will be hearing it. And that's obviously suboptimal. Unfortunately, uh, I can't take this, I will not take this apart for this video. It's a pain in the ass to tear down. It's not as hard as it is to take the CD drive, but it's still quite, uh, quite tricky. So basically what's happening here is this backplate also has a board with, uh, what is the wires, with these wires. So there's a board over here and the two spindles spinning the cassette actually have black and white marks on it. And there's optical encoders, one for each, and those communicate with the uh, the main header so this chip here only handles the motor switching on and off so there's nothing this doesn't do anything too fancy however the the uh, outputs of the two or I think it was four or three anyway there's more than there's at least two optical encoders in here uh, the outputs of which go to this header uh, it's very nice. You can actually find uh, schematics for this. I will link them in the description. Uh, schematics, board views, uh, very nice. So a lot of documentation. The problem is the uh, the processor actually receives note and keeps track of how fast and in which direction the uh, spindles are spinning. And probably this this has to, helps with uh, detecting when the tape ends. I don't know. I've never actually used tapes. I'm, I'm too young for this shit. So anyway, the point is you cannot spoof this easily. So it's, it's definitely doable, but you would need some, at least, a, uh, yeah, I guess you would need at least a signal analyzer to see the pattern uh, given off by these uh, optical encoders. And then you would need a microcontroller somewhere and I, it's just not worth it. The one issue that this has, this mod has, is there's actually, so although there's a lot of gearing in here, so quite a lot, uh, from the main motor to the uh, main spindles, there's a, there's a belt that goes kind of like this, I don't know, something like that. So quite a long belt. It's fine now, it still has a lot of torque. I actually tried to stop the, the spindles, it's still quite fine, I'd say. But once the tape dies, the, the belt dies, the, the, the CPU will notice that, ah crap, the tape's not spinning, say error on the screen and go back to radio. So you will not be able to use the Bluetooth. Again, this should be a problem for future generations even. I'd say at least 10 years it should last. I'm gonna put a tape, uh, right now it doesn't have any tape, and I'm gonna put in a tape that has absolutely no tape on it, uh, just to prevent the mechanism from rattling, because how it is now, it does rattle a bit. So it does do this kind of kind of noise. Um, exactly. So uh, let's actually finish finish this up. Over here we have. Uh, let's actually zoom in. Uh, what we have over here is um, the CSR eighty six forty five board. We have some wires here that are just in case future programming is needed. I've already put a name on this, so it has the a custom name. It doesn't have an equalizer because the CSR8645 uh, actually doesn't have a robust equalizer in that uh, if you set it up for iPhones, it will not work, I think. It will not work on Android devices because those don't use AAC streaming. If you do set it up for Android devices, it'll pop. It'll have this pop, so when you skim, through a song it'll have some weird distortions and so that's not doable and so yeah, that's why it's very important to go through the uh, onboard signal processing uh, 
to get the equalizer and volume. All right, uh, and on the back, on, sandwiched on the back of the DC-DC converter, we have this uh, step-down converter. So this motor will actually get whatever voltage is on the, on the car 12-volt line. So it could float up as high as 14.5, even higher if something is, uh, has gone wrong. So this just caps it at uh, 12 volts. Um, because these DC-DC converters are very sensitive, so the data sheet specifies them as half a volt plus minus over the over and below the right, so they're quite sensitive. Anyway, okay, so going handheld now, I'll uh, show you guys where to connect this. So there's three very large test points. So they're as large as the solder pads you see over there, um, and those are simply ground. Audio left and audio right. And so that is very nice. And it's not that important which one is which. I will actually put it on the screen, right? Which one is which. I'll overlay it in uh, editing. Okay, so right next to that, uh, we can now go back to the uh, stationary setup. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, those three signals are actually coming from this chip over here and this is the uh, a Sony chip I actually have the data sheet for it over here um, so it's this chip might actually zoom out a bit more and um, what's very interesting about this chip is that it actually has an auxiliary input so let's see where that is I think that was the best we would get. Okay. So there's this pinout diagram. And um, let's see, where is it? All right, over here. So on pins 5 and 26, there actually is a facility for a stereo aux. Right, so this would basically go to the to the front of the tape deck or whatever, um, and you could actually feed the Bluetooth. So the the most elegant way of doing it would be feeding the aux signal into this chip, and uh, there's an aux enable or or selector. Let's see where that is. Um, So here, so in switch, right, and you can see that this goes and selects whichever input is, is supposed to be selected. The problem is, and the reason why I didn't use this, is I just don't have the technology for this. I mean, this chip has a, I don't know, micron wide pin pitch, so I, there's no way I can get into solder over there. And it's fully surrounded by other shit, right? So you have these caps, you have this connector, you have the cans. There's absolutely no way that I could get in there, even with a very good soldering iron. I, I really wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't fancy it in any case. And then the signal goes to the uh, signal processing, the main signal processing chip. Um, again, this this takes a uh, this this takes a stereo input. Uh, single-ended from the tape preamp and a one-wire uh, FM signal from the uh, from the receiving circuitry so this basically uh, conditions the FM signal um, and sends it to this and this demodulates it inside of it and uh, so there's no way to override the radio because that was my initial intention I get some relays and overwrite the, the radio when the Bluetooth is connected, but that's not doable. And then from here it just goes to the uh, amplifier chip. So exactly, so we're basically tapping in somewhere between the preamp and the um, main audio mixer chip. 
unfortunately, right, there's those huge three solder pads where we could just do it, so that's fine. Another thing to note, um, I'll actually link, uh, as I've said, to the um, data sheets and uh, schematics down below. You'll see, and I think it's on this side, there's, there's some pins, there's five pins at the beginning of this uh, connector. It starts here at one and ends at uh, 19 on this side, I think. Might be the other way around, but I highly doubt it. Um, and what's happening here is one of these is called PB ref. Let's actually bring it up because I might be talking out of my ass and uh, yeah, it wouldn't help too much. So uh, let's zoom out a bit. A bit more. Uh, schematics, service manual. So it's a very nice document. I really would like to get the proper scrolling. How do you do that? Vertical, okay. So quite a bit of uh, schematics here. Very nice. And you have this one. It's in German, by the way, so pretty hardcore. And um, exactly. So this is the connector, and we'll see on this on this end you will have PB ref, and what PB ref is is a 2.6. I think it's supposed to be 2.5, but it's like 2.62 volts that is steadily coming from the uh, from the PB FB pin, right? So the the um, this chip is generating it. The chip that is supposed to interpret the, and amplify the tape is generating the signal. And then there's four other pins, these ones here. And so two of them are for the one direction and two of them are for the other direction. Uh, so for the one head and for the other head, there's actually two read heads inside of the one for each direction. Um, and basically the way this works, and again, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm fairly confident, let's just put it that way, is depending on how the magnetic field on the tape is, these pins here will fluctuate above or below this PB ref, which is why it's in the middle of the 5 volt uh, supply rail of all the circuitry. Um, so you could actually have this floating, so when there's no tape and the thing is playing, and the head is just in, in air, these four wires will all have the same as PB ref. I actually didn't play with it with a magnet or some shit because I don't know, I don't want to fuck anything up. So what I actually did to prevent absolutely any noise, I'm, now I'm starting to regret this and I might actually undo it, it's not that big a deal. I actually crowbarred the PB ref to all these inputs. So now if you put a tape, tape in, it's just going to be silent. So you could put any tape in and it'll not make any sound because all these inputs are not free to go up uh, above or below the PB ref, they're shorted out. All right. Um, I might actually, yeah, I don't know. It's behaving quite, I'm not sure how, how it'll behave to having a signal on its outputs. So I don't want that to somehow interact with the tape head, I, I don't know. I don't know. I did it that way and it worked, so now it's like that. And I think that pretty much covers everything, now does it? You connect to those three pins on the BE3200. Um, the 3100 or 3200, I think the, those should have very similar topologies and there's data sheets for those as well, so I'll include all the ones I have. Um, the tape mechanism can't easily be spoofed, so you're stuck with it, kind of. Um, which is why I actually put a little note here, instructing any future repairman on what to do if the Bluetooth doesn't work. And I've also written it on this uh, piece of paper here. And apart from that, not much. Uh, let me know in the comments if uh, you guys have radios like this and if yours, I mean, yours definitely should have the fader, right? Let me know if you know why it doesn't have it on mine. And any other questions, as always, also down in the comments. Have a good one, guys.